15th meeting of the planning board. Uh, the first order of business is a review of the minutes of our previous meeting from July 19th of 2005. Are there, are there any comments on the minutes? Or do I have a motion? Move to accept. Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded. All those in favor? Okay. One abstention? Okay. The motion carries. Uh, the correspondence we have received prior to tonight's meeting, we have an email from Chief Williams regarding the high school field lights, a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Ham regarding Spurwink Woods, a letter from the town attorney regarding road standards, a letter regarding the Coastal Islands Comprehensive Plan, the zoning practice journal from June of 2005, Shoreland Zoning News from the summer of 2005, the Planning Commissioner's Journal from the summer of 2005, and the September 2005 Conservation Commission minutes. And just before tonight's meeting, we received a copy of an email from, I, I may mispronounce his name, Bob Chiozzi, regarding the Stony Brook Road Paper Street issue. Uh, we have a few consent agenda items uh, uh, that we'll move through first tonight. The first uh, regards the, is regarded, regarding the high school field lights. Uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a de minimis change to install different lighting for the athletic field located behind the high school, U21-12, section 19-9 site plan amendments. But that's the applicant to uh, bring us up to date on where we are with this application. Well, I'm Jim Croft, and this is Doug Courier, and we're representing the uh, Lighting Upgrade Committee. Um, there has been no change in any uh, information that we could provide you um, from what we provided at the workshop. Okay. Um, there's nothing really more to add, I don't think, at this point in time. Thank you. Uh, this is a consent agenda item, so we don't typically engage in a real substantive review of the application at this stage unless there are any questions or comments by the board. Uh, Barbara. Well, in light of Chief in light of Chief William's letter, I think we should at least have a response to how the field is going to be used and whether or not it's going to be used for anything but athletic activities and when it would be closed, because he's expressing some real concern about is this the same allowing bans and things like that. Is this the same concern that, he, that we dealt with at the workshop? Yes. Okay. Um, at the workshop, um, the discussion was around um, allowing the uh, paid professional people both in the school district and the community services who are in charge of that to make those decisions and to work with the police chief to come up with some guidelines and I believe that will work. I forgot, yeah. thank you. Okay. And I, I for the Peter? record, I, I certainly that's something not in our, I would think something not part of our planning process would be to put some restriction on that. I think the solution's fine. Thank you. <clears throat> In light of that discussion, do we have a motion? David? Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth to amend the school renovation site plan to upgrade the lighting at the athletic field located behind the high school located at 345 Ocean House Road be approved as a consent agenda item. We have a motion by David Griffin, seconded by Peter. All those in favor? Yeah, the motion carries, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next item our, on our agenda, the Brothers Way Private Road approval. Uh, Stephen Murray is requesting an extension of the resource protection permit issued to construct Brothers Way private road off of Fowler Road. The permit is valid for one year and was approved by the Planning Board on September 21st of 2005. Uh, the application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-8-3 Resource Protection Regulations. Uh, this is a consent agenda, excuse me, a consent agenda item uh, which does not usually involve a presentation. Uh, my understanding is uh, all that is asked by this applicant is for a one-year extension. Um, does anybody feel that we need to engage in a substantive review of this request? In light of that, is there a motion? <coughs> Paul? 
Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stephen Murray for an extension of the time limit for the resource protection permit needed to construct Brothers Way, a private road off Fowler Road, be approved. Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded. All those in favor? The motion carries. Third consent agenda item is the Golden Ridge Subdivision Amendment. Uh, Jeff and Vicki Kennedy are requesting an amendment to the Golden Ridge Subdivision to allow the Conservation Commission to make a field determination of the amount of fencing and landscaping needed adjacent to the Greenbelt Trail. The request will be reviewed for compliance with Section 16-2-5 Subdivision Amendments. Again, this is coming before us as a consent agenda item. I understand from reviewing the materials from the town planner uh, that the Conservation Commission has had an opportunity to review this and has in indicated its approval of this amendment. Uh, but I understand there is a, a member of the commission here tonight, if any of the planning board members have any questions about this particular application. It seems to me there are none. Uh, and it, also appears that we would be ready then for a motion. Jack. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the request of Jeff and Vicki Kennedy for an amendment to the Golden Ridge subdivision approval to allow the Conservation Commission to make a field determination of the amount of fencing and landscaping needed adjacent to the Greenbelt Trail be approved as a consent agenda item. We have a motion. Is there a second? Okay, Peter. All, the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving along in record time here. Uh, we are now into the new business, uh, the In by the Sea site plan amendments. Uh, the Inn by the Sea is requesting amendments to the previously approved site plan to reconfigure the entrance, adjust the building addition, construct the mechanical building, change the landscaping, and establish a temporary construction entrance for the Inn located at 40 Bowery Beach Road. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 site plan regulations. At this point, I would ask the applicant to uh, introduce the proposed amendments. Good evening, my name is Steve Bradstreet with Aquarian Engineering Services. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Barry Hosmer, the uh, landscape architect on the project, and uh, hopefully Scott Tease with TFH Architect will be joining us shortly. Um, what uh, we're back before the board uh, to show is uh, a number of items uh, that have been revised uh, by the clients, or asked to be revised by the clients to upgrade uh, the appearance of the entrance, uh, some building changes, uh, mechanical changes, and then uh, a little bit to do with the construction access to the site. What we're proposing to do is the existing entrance, shown very lightly here, is approximately 30 feet wide. And what we are proposing to do to match the entrance, the existing entrance, under the porta share in the front of the building is to have a one-way in around this and then a one-way out with a, an island in the, in the middle. We are also proposing uh, along with this is to um, upgrade considerably the uh, landscaping that is along the front. Currently, um, there is some landscaping adjacent to the signs in this location, then some street trees the landscaping continues with more trees on this side along the, on the, uh, uh, that side of the property. Along with the um, upgrade of the entrance, there's a lot of work being done with the material usage. Um, it will be paved 
to the right of way line, uh, cobblestone just to give you an entrance feel as you come in, then pavement. And then these are brick pavers, uh, not, excuse me, not brick pavers, granite pavers laid in a pattern, a, uh, a circular uh, pattern along through here. This is still paved. This is the um, already approved uh, parking lot on this side. And this would be overlaid too at this point. Um, the additional um, building modifications, there were some in the elevations changes, slight footprint changes in the main addition to the inn. Uh, but what has done or occurred over time is that uh, they found that they couldn't fit it all in one package, so to speak. And what they're opting to do is, is locate a mechanical building. This is currently where the trash receptacle uh, trash building is located right here. They're looking at um, providing a mechanical outbuilding here with a cooling tower. Uh, we provided in the, uh, the package uh, what was requested by the board as the uh, decibel uh, readings um, proposed at the property lines and that was in the package. Any extension over to the parking, parking lot, those spaces that are taken up by that are actually made up down here where this was a one way around and then back out. We're now parking for additional spaces here. We lost three here and lost one here, so we've made up the spaces, so there's no loss in parking. The, um, the last thing that was uh, primarily uh, brought up by staff was the construction entrance. Though the landscape plan does not show it, On the overall site plan, which is C100, we have indicated a temporary uh, construction access point. The inn still proposes to maintain business, um, not in the inn, but in the um, cottage areas over here. And in doing so, they would like to have a construction uh, entrance here. The site distance in either direction to the left is over 2,000 feet and is over 900 feet and it's a 40 mile an hour zone uh, from this location. Um, in doing so and in discussions with the fire chief, the entrance here which is the grassed over gravel entrance uh, which is for emergency access will actually be widened and paved only temporarily to allow um, patrons to enter in this location while the work is being done at the uh, main entrance. Um, the discussion with the fire chief has also uh, revised the plan slightly, not from what you have in your package, but uh, we took into account some suggestions by the fire chief for 25 foot radiuses rather than the 20 that we had shown, widened it from 16 to 18 feet and provide a sloped granite curb on the island so uh, in his words he can drive over it if he needs to. Um, so we've made those changes to accommodate the uh, fire chief's concerns. Um, at this time I'd like to uh, address some of the, uh, w at least one or two of the comments that the Public Works Director and the Town Engineer had, and that would be item number uh, four for the light fixtures. Um, they are not shown on the plans that you have. I have a new plan here, and it's the uh, magical word, world of CAD. Uh, the, the note is on your plans, and it points to nothing. It was a, a layer that was frozen and, and uh, just did not print out. They are on the plans. Um, and that was one of the comments by the uh, town engineer. What we do not have on there is directional signing. Uh, they mentioned that uh, we should have stop signs and more than likely one way do not enter if it's uh, on those entrances or an exit. Uh, and those would be added. Um, the granite pavers, they did not want any granite pavers or cobble within the right of way. And I think what they were looking at that was mistakenly, uh, mistakenly shown is on C100, this entire cross-hatched area 
was noted to be new paved slash cobble slash granite entrance. But if you went back to the landscaping plans, the cobble actually started here, and this was paved out there. So that is actually addressed on the uh, uh, plans that we have uh, today or before you. Uh, there are a few more uh, comments that the uh, staff had in regards to the um, the building in particular and possibly the uh, the septic system. And I guess at this time, I'd like to ask Scott Tees uh, to address those uh, issues uh, for you. Thank you, Steve. Um, Apparently there was some concern about the location of the mechanical equipment building. And I think as you recall, as I explained last time, uh, we had an option to put the equipment up on the roof or to look at a separate building. And we opted to use the separate building. One of the concerns with moving it out of the main building was that the area that we have between the uh, leaching fields for the septic system is very tight. And so we've developed a foundation system where at least the fence, the screen, I think you recall that, as I showed you last time, around this area, this extended area, will actually be a fence. And that was the, the uh, perforated fence that we've modified that you've received the decibel rating on because of the concern for sound. So I think that's been addressed both acoustically and structurally. Um, there was also a, another issue um, having to do with um, handicapped accessibility. Um, as you may be aware right now, the present inn um, does not have direct access to the front from the, the front to the water side from the deck area, uh, nor does the proposal as we're suggesting um, it be constructed. Um, we did at one point look at a accessible ramp that wrapped around the outside. It got very complex, a lot of different layers, railing, 42 inches, four inch rule and everything. Um, we analyzed the access from inside the general area, which of course is accessible internally to an individual that would like to get down in this area. And I think if you walk this, you'll find that this is a handicapped accessible access way that takes my, by my very slow walk, about 90, uh, 90 seconds, a minute and a half. So stretch it and say two minutes. Uh, with the argument that is, if uh, somebody was disabled, wanted to get out there, it would probably be a nice day anyways, and you know that additional loop would not be all that circuitous. We do have um, state fire marshal's acceptance in terms of handicapped accessibility. I did not make that presentation, and I did not have an opportunity to address that directly with uh, my associate who did, um, uh, did have that meeting, but it was not flagged as an issue with the fire marshal in terms of accessibility. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Barry Hosmer. I'm the landscape architect on the project. There has been some concern about the landscaping along Route 77, and I'm here to try to address that. The landscape plan and entrance drive have been revised to change the impression of the entrance of the inn to a more grand and formal feel. This is achieved through the use of a wider entrance drive, as Steve had talked about. We're flanking it with two six by six columns. We have a richly detailed entrance drive and circle. And then we're also constructing an earthen berm that's very heavily landscaped. The impression that we're trying to portray is that a guest that's arriving from the north or the south, as they come upon the project and near it, that they're approaching something different. The way we've accomplished that is that we have extended the street tree concept from the south and from the north, and then we've discontinued it, and we changed to the earthen berm, which is one and a half to two and a half feet tall. It is then composed of a split face granite curb that runs the length along the right-of-way line. There is a continuous border of a low-growing shrub called a potent till that runs the whole length of the, the front portion of the berm. In the center is a wider growing double file viburnum and then it's backed by uh, a two to three foot tall growing juniper. 
The berm is punctuated by the use of Korean fir, a summer flowering tree called Stuardia. And also near the existing entrance, there are two larger Austrian pines. We've added a third on the left side of the drive, and then we've added three more on the right side to create a semi-formal feel. The berm plantings we feel create the, the essence of a wall, but yet still provide a, a green, semi-transparent view to the, to the inn. Uh, as, an, as a guest might enter, they would turn in, they would see this entrance island that would be a somewhat of a parterre look with the green, or ground plane design with the green grass, a low-growing juniper, annuals, it has a flagpole, and the entrance sign. As they come in, they would cross, as Steve noted, we have flush granite curb, cobbles, and then we enter a, a flush granite curb and granite paved area. That's a concentric paving pattern. These granite pavers are, rough, are 12 inches by 12 inches with a thermal finish. As you reach the Port Cochere, we change the direction and the color of the pavers to emphasize the entrance drive. The island in the middle, we're retaining the existing fountain and then we repeat the parterre concept, again with grass, split face curb, juniper, and annuals. We feel that the entrance concept introduces a loosely symmetrical and formal grand arrival sequence for the guests. Now, the existing landscape has been largely removed to accomplish this. Obviously, constructing a berm, any earth over existing trees will affect that. And the existing landscaping, aside from these very nice Austrian pines, in our opinion, is somewhat overgrown with lilac behind the existing walls, red twig dogwood, and American cranberry viburnum, which are very tall and leggy at this point and give somewhat of an unkempt look. That's the reason for the changes. Steve? The uh, last uh, item that uh, was on the staff's comments was in regards to the, uh, the parking um, in association with outside um, functions that would be held there. The original approval was for 176 spaces now with the library room closed uh, because it's been converted into other space and the same with the seal cove room um, those spaces are not required so i think they should still be available i, I know in marine's uh, uh, notes that uh, taking out those 28 spaces would be limiting future guests to 148 um, I still believe that's 176 only because those spaces are not being utilized as um, uh, function spaces that would require anybody there. Um, so I guess that would be still open for discussion there. Um, with that, I open it up for any uh, comments or discussion. Thank you. Actually, the, uh, the, the first word of, the, of business that the board needs to, to determine is whether the application is complete. Uh, David? Uh, before we go any further, I just would like to let the board know that I do have a minor uh, involvement in this project with uh, supplying some equipment, but it's financially very small. And I want the board to know this. If, if they feel I should recuse myself, fine. Otherwise, uh, I'll stay on. Yeah, typically, and Maureen, you can correct me if I'm wrong, if there is any financial interest albeit small, in a project. Board members do typically recuse themselves, is that? Mr. Griffin called me this afternoon on this, and, and the law, I believe, says that you have to have a 10% or greater interest. Okay. And he doesn't believe he has and feels that he can participate in the project, at which point I advised him to disclose his potential conflict to the board, and it would be up to the board to determine whether or not he can participate or, or not. Okay. Any Given that, I, I don't see an issue. I, I know that we've been perhaps overly conservative on this issue in the past, but uh, 
anybody has any other different feelings? Seeing none? No, if, yeah, if, I'll just ask the question. Dave, do you believe you have a, uh, either more than a 10% interest in this or a conflict? No. Okay. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. Okay. Uh, thanks for disclosing that, though. Uh, the, the first issue that we need to determine tonight is completeness, whether the application is complete, Barbara. Do you have a motion? Okay. Mm, motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of HMH limited partnership for site plan amendments to reconfigure the entrance, adjust the building addition, construct a me mechanical building, change the landscaping and establish a temporary construction entrance for the Inn by the Sea located, located at 40 Bowery Beach Road be deemed complete. Do we have a motion? Is there a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Jack. All those in favor? And the motion carries. Uh, Maureen reminded me that we actually have scheduled a public hearing for this evening. So at this point, I will open the hearing up to any public comments. If anybody wishes to make a public, uh, to make a comment on this application, please step up to the podium, identify yourself, and we'd be happy to hear from you. I'm suspecting you all are here for the next application, however. So with that, I will close the public hearing. Uh, at this point, I would open it up to the board if they have any questions for the applicant. They've made a pretty complete presentation already, so it seems appropriate that we uh, pose questions if there are any. Paul. Mr. Chairman, I have a handful of questions here. Uh, Stephen, probably mostly directed at you. Um, the location of the new mechanical building, um, it appears on the plans that we reviewed that there is some reduction in aisle width um, with the existing, uh, with, with, with the proposed building. My question to you is something to look into. Uh, is the reduction in aisle width enough to cause it to not be a two-way aisle at that point? And I'll, just, I'll, I'll ask you to look into that and, and, okay. and, and clarify that. Um, just for note, several of the plans uh, say scale as noted, but there, aren't, there is no scale identified on the plan. Just ask that to be uh, corrected. Um, I did not see in the, in, the, in the set that we were provided a, a detail for the construction entrance. Could you elaborate on the material layout, so on and so forth, of the proposed construction entrance? A uh, construction entrance would be typically 20 feet wide, uh, and it is constructed with at least a, and there should be a detail, if not, there will be, a minimum of 12 inches of a crushed stone, typically a one and a half to two inch size crushed stone that will, um, it's for mudding off the tires off of the vehicles as they exit the site um, prior to getting out on Route 77. That it's, that's its whole, uh, uh, role yep. in the plans. Okay. Uh, and last question, and I apologize if this was answered in, during the presentation, but there was a comment regarding the location of the mechanical building relative to the septic chamber. Has that been identified and found to be okay? Uh, yes. As Scott had mentioned, I had talked with uh, actually uh, an associate of his uh, today. The this out area here is actually a screening fence around a cooling tower. The cooling tower foundation is outside of the um, envelope of the septic field, which is in this backyard area. What is encroaching or looks to be encroaching is the fence. And they have, uh, uh, TFH architects have come up with a design that has been acceptable or accepted by Al Frick, who is the, for uh, design the septic sy systems. Uh, it's a shallow foundation for those uh, footings on the fence that is acceptable to him that have no impact on the um, septic fields. Those have not been shown on, or detailed on the plans. Okay. Great. Thank you, David. Sure. Any other comments or questions? David. Uh, I have two questions. One of the uh, landscape architect, um, what is a split face granite curb? Just out of curiosity. Well, a split face granite curb is, 
the vertical face on a curb, an, a typical curb that you see is split face. It's got a rough, slightly undulating edge. And what we're proposing for both the curbing here and here is to have a split face on the vertical face as well as the horizontal face, just to give it a more stone look versus a real fine cut edge. And what is the material that you're going to have on the berm other than the vegetation? Is we're, going, we're going to um, have it w covered with wood chips. Now, you have to keep in mind that these two berms encompass 675 shrubs we're putting in there. They're three, four, and five feet on center apart the day they're installed. The intent of the design is so that they will fully cover the berm in a short period of time. So that initially you need to have something that will keep weeds down as well as prevent erosion. And then the theory is that in a few years these shrubs will completely form a solid mass of vegetation so that you'll no longer see the wood chips. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I, I note from the, uh, the materials we've received for tonight's application, there is a draft motion to table, and I'm wondering how the board feels about whether we move to table or whether we're ready to go forward with an approval. Barbara. Well, I, I would like to go forward with an approval. I don't see that we have anything to discuss next time, and we can put a condition or two if we feel we need to for the things that haven't appeared on the plans. For example, the septic, that it be clear that it's a fence and, and uh, the questions that Paul had, if there's anything that needs to be added in terms oh. of a condition. I, I feel perfectly comfortable going ahead with this this evening. Any other thoughts on that front? I know the town planner may, <laughs> if, if she's willing, offer us some. On be, yeah, on behalf of town staff, I, I have to really remind you that several of the items that have been raised tonight by town staff are not on the plans that you have in front of you. Okay. They've been shown to you on the plans that have been brought this evening. So, you know, the, the septic system, I reviewed this with the, the building inspector and said, is this a problem? And he said, yeah, that's a problem. So there's been no letter submitted by Al Frick for staff to review. There's been no revision of plans. Uh, the public works director feels very strongly about cobbles in the right-of-way and was adamant to me about that. Um, and while I understand it's not shown on the, on the site, on the landscaping plan, I mean, usually the engineer and the public works director go to the site plan, and it is unclear on the site plan. There are several issues that I think should be clarified uh, before this goes for a final approval. Again, the parking. Um, when the area that was originally the library and the seal cove room were converted to hotel rooms during the prior approval, the applicant added parking to accommodate those hotel rooms. That means that those new hotel rooms now have X number of parking spaces. They can't be, they're, when the board approved the outdoor functions, you made an agreement based on the shared parking concept that certain facilities could be closed and those parking spaces could be used for the outdoor events. Those facilities aren't going to be available anymore. The parking spaces that were reserved for the library and for the seal cove room are gone. Um, and, if the, and they're now being used for rooms. Right. So, you know, perhaps I have, you know, made a miscalculation, and if the applicant would like to take some time and fully count all the spaces that are available again, because again, we're looking at a plan that's only partially what we saw before. Um, we have new, new parking spaces on this plan that weren't on the original approved plan. We had a full site plan, we can count all the parking spaces, we can run the calculation all over again and find out exactly where we are. But for these reasons, I would recommend that we are sure about what we approve because otherwise it's extremely difficult for staff, staff. to enforce plans later on. So, so have the staff members you identified seen the most up-to-date plans? They didn't see these plans because these plans are just arrived tonight. Right. That's, they arrived, I guess they've the, seen the plans that you guys have in front of you. Right. No, I, I, that's what I wanted to clarify. Barbara. 
In terms of the parking, isn't there some kind of an arrangement for outside parking when there's an event to park in a church down the street that perhaps needs to be incorporated as part of this? Through the chair. Um, we actually amended the ordinance to provide for that, and the applicant chose not to come back and amend their approval to take advantage of that. So we do not have any off-site parking currently recorded as them having credit for. They chose to just live with the parking they had on site. So maybe that needs to be reconsidered by the applicant. It's, it's an option that's still available. My initial impression from reviewing the materials was that there were still some loose ends that did need some clarification. I understand Barbara's uh, sentiment to try to accommodate the applicant, try to move this along and see if we can work in conditions into the approval. But in light of what we've heard expressed by the town planner, I'm a bit reluctant to, to approve this tonight. I don't anticipate there are going to be huge problems down the road in November. I guess I, my question for you is, well, one, two questions. What are your reactions to everything you've heard so far as far as approving tonight or not approving tonight? And are there compelling reasons why you need approval tonight uh, versus waiting until uh, the November meeting? Um. The, the issues that uh, Maureen brought up, um, I mean, the cobbles in the right of way, the plans that you do have in front of you show that there are no cobbles in the right of way when you look at the landscaping plans. The overall site plan that happens to have a crosshatch on there does say paved slash cobble slash granite. It doesn't show where those are specifically, but all my plans refer to the landscape plan, which does show this. This is the L100, the landscape plan, which shows this is the right of way, there's the cobble. So it, I feel that is shown on the plans, and those are in the plans that you have tonight. These plans are no different than, with the exception of one sheet, no different than the set of plans that you have in front of you. I've colored this one up, but the C10C102 that had the lighting fixtures on it. Um, your, that is correct. The lighting fixtures are not shown in yours. The note is shown on yours that says proposed light typical, and it points to nothing. Um, and I happened to get that from a, a comment from Marine that, and so we went back in and that layer was not turned on. So we turned it on only for the purpose of bringing it to the planning board tonight to show you. And you can tell because this is a colored bordered sheet where all the others are black and white. This has been colored up. So all the plans that you do have there in your package are the plans that I have tonight, with the exception of C-102. The um, septic field, mechanical building, I'm confident, and I know Scott is, and we can get that uh, confirmation from Al Frick in regards to, yes, whatever they have come up with a design does work. No, it is not available for you to uh, review tonight and was not submitted in the package. Um, but we do not see any issue in providing that for your uh, approval. The parking calculations, um, I didn't think we were coming up again tonight until I saw the, the minutes. Uh, so I don't know exactly how to respond to that. Um, I think that it's easy enough that I can look back at those calculations, determine if the 176 is appropriate or the 148 that Maureen uh, is noting in her memo is, is the correct number. Um, but I, I don't have that answer for you tonight, but I think it's something that I can address in a memo or correspondence with Maureen, um, with other staff if necessary, um, but I don't think it's a, uh, an issue that should hold up um, the approval. As far as tonight or November 5th uh, or the November meeting when, when that might be, um, obviously with any clients they want to have the approval now. They already have the original approval that they can be working through and with, um, but they're obviously trying to get moving on with any sort of winter construction that may be proposed and get going and a month buys them a lot of time. So I would move to ask that um, uh, you consider approval tonight with any conditions that can be addressed directly with staff. Thank you. Um, 
just first, any, are there any board members that, or, I know I would like to hear back from the town planner on this issue. Maybe we get your comments first, Maureen. And I, I apologize, I really don't want to put anyone on the spot, but it's my information that the Inn by the Sea pulled a building permit and then withdrew their application for a building permit and told the code officer they weren't going to start construction until next year. Do you know one way or the other? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I represent the HRH partnership, Tim Levine, uh, with Olympia Development. And uh, it is uh, correct that, uh, that at this point we are anticipating that construction will not uh, start this fall. Uh, <coughs> time became simply too tight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important that the project start sort of first of November and finish end of May so that we don't ruin our season. And uh, time just simply ran out on us. Uh, so we are not anticipating it. Um, that being said, uh, we still very much want to proceed with the project and proceed with the planning. My impression, perhaps incorrect, was that <coughs> we had received full site plan approval and that we were here tonight to uh, discuss a revised entranceway that was slightly revised and the location of this um, outbuilding that we had and that those were basically the only issues that were that were um, at issue and that was sort of an amendment to the existing approval. We have not changed the usages at all from what we had. Uh, we have not added any hotel rooms and I do not believe, as far as I know, that we've changed the number of parking spaces. Uh, none, none of those issues have changed at all. And we were just here uh, seeking uh, to amend that plan slightly to uh, allow us to put the, the uh, boiler building where we wanted and, and to upgrade the entrance. I, I guess I'm a little, go ahead, Barbara. Well, I'm a little confused about when the construction is actually starting. Is it starting November 1st or is it starting January 1st? Neither. 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 Next November. It's, so we had anticipated starting um, the end of this month. Yes. And um, we have uh, determined that it was became impractical for us to do that. We simply weren't ready to start. Right. And so it will be uh, probably be next October that we actually start construction. Oh, so it really doesn't, it is not of paramount importance that this be <clears throat> approved tonight that you can deal with the the few questions that are being asked so that the staff is comfortable and wait for approval in November. Uh -huh. I mean, we're not anticipating any problem with the approval, Right. certainly. We're just saying, well, let's get these things ironed out and the staff will have their answers and work anything out with you that needs to right. be and then everything will be fine for next month and we're really not right. holding anything up. No, I, 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 don't, I don't think in that sense if, if the board is uncomfortable that it's going to create a, a great deal of hardship for us. I only was a little surprised that I, I, I wasn't anticipating these other issues coming up but or we would have addressed them a little more proactively which I apologize for. Well, but, unfortunately, uh, when you have a complicated project, and it's a right. large project, sometimes things come up yeah, that's that fine. we don't no, we, we can understand that. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's, yes, I, I would say it would not cause a great deal of hardship for us. And for what it's worth, the uh, owners of the Inn by the Sea are great citizens and have always been very cooperative throughout this process. And I have no doubt we'll be able to shepherd this through the uh, process. But it seems to me to make sense to, to finish this up in November yeah. so we can tie up some of these loose ends. Sure. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? In light of that discussion, is there a motion for the board to consider? David? He had ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of HM H limited partnership for site plan amendments to reconfigure the entrance, adjust the building addition, construct a mechanical building, change the landscaping, and establish a temporary construction entrance for the Inn by the Sea located at 40 Bowery Beach Road be, ta be deemed tabled to the regular November 15, 2005 planning board meeting at which time a public hearing shall be held. Actually, we've already had the public hearing. Yep. So would you agree to make the, make the motion without the last? I mean, I can do. we just delete the last clause? Okay. 
We have a uh, revised motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yeah, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Other business, the Town Council has referred to the Planning Board a request for a recommendation on the vacation of Paper Streets located off Stony Brook Road and Ocean View Road. Uh, the Planning Board is acting in a, an advisory capacity to the Town Council. A public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. Uh, I understand that uh, some of the residents in that area of town have asked for staff to make a brief presentation on the status of the paper streets under consideration. So I would ask uh, Maureen Mira to uh, summarize the request and, and uh, bring us up to date. Sure. Um, for the few people who haven't already asked me, um, I'd like to tell you what a paper street is. Uh, a paper street is when someone owns a piece of property and they decide to subdivide it. And in this case, in this, these areas of Cape Elizabeth, we're really looking at activity that happened in the 1920s. Um, they would take their property, divide it up into lots and roads, bring it down to the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, and record it. Then they would sell lots, build roads, people would build houses. Not all the roads would get built. And the roads that were not built but were shown on plans, hence they only exist on paper, are what we call paper streets. And the law on paper streets basically says that everyone that owns a lot shown on the plan where the paper street was originally recorded has a right in the paper street, regardless of whether you own land that fronts on the paper street. You have a right to use that paper street to walk across it. If you wanted to build the road, you could go and build the road. So when there's an action to vacate <coughs> the paper street, it's really a two-part action. And the first part is for the town to abandon its rights in the street. That would be for the town to say that we are not going to ever try to come here and build this road using the rights that were conveyed to us when the plan was recorded. If we want it, if the town vacates the streets and then decides a year from now that they do want to build that road, they have to go in and buy the property and negotiate with property owners. So it's an abandonment of rights that we have in those areas. And when, when the town abandons its rights, I believe it also sets a clock motion that gives the other people, the other lot owners, one year to file suit to preserve their rights or to not preserve their rights. So it's a two-part two thing. There are rights that private property owners have in these paper streets, and there's a right that the town has in the paper street. And what we're talking about is the town potentially abandoning its right in the paper street. If a street is vacated, then that means that the area of the paper street gets divided between the abutters. Half of the street goes to one side, half of the street goes to the other abutter. In the case of the property on Stony Brook Road, there is a lot that's owned by the town of Cape Elizabeth, and on either side of it, there are two paper, there's a paper street, and most of you received a notice that has an area that has a slashed area. That's the area of the paper street. The solid color is the area of the town-owned land. The town owns a lot that's 9,966 square feet. If both paper streets are vacated, additional land would be added to the town lot that would bring it above 10,000 square feet. 10,000 square feet is the minimum lot size for a non-conforming buildable lot in Cape Elizabeth. But that doesn't mean that the lot is buildable. It just means it meets the lot size requirement. There could be other impediments to construction on the lot. The lot could be in, in such a shape that it couldn't meet setbacks and you couldn't fit a house on it. Or it could be wetland. We don't have that information on this lot. We also don't have any commitment by the council to do anything with this land. They might choose to sell it. They might not choose to sell it. There's been no decision made. 
Um, the other lot on Ocean View Road, again, it's, there's a lot of land owned by the town adjacent to this paper street. That paper street actually has a trail in it. And for those people who are familiar with the area, the trail is right behind the porta potty. So in that case, again, the, the lot would be more than 10,000 square feet if the street is vacated and half of the street is added to the town lot. And again, that lot, there's no information that we have available that the lot would be buildable or not buildable. All we know is it would go above 10,000 square feet based on our own estimates. And there's also no commitment by the town council to sell the lot or to not sell the lot. They have merely asked the planning board to consider whether or not the paper streets should be vacated. Frank, can I add one more thing? And that's just to comment on our role, Dave, is to simply make a recommendation one way or the other or neutral to the town council. Ultimately, it's their decision as to whether not only to decide to sell it, but to decide whether to vacate or not. Is that was purely advisory. Okay. Just want that clear to everybody out there. At this point, I think it would be appropriate to open this up to a public hearing. Uh, part of what we need to do is hear from uh, the abutters and other concerned residents as to their thoughts so that we're in a better position to make a recommendation one way or the other or not make any recommendation. So I will open it now to a public hearing. If you're interested in speaking on this issue, please come up to the podium, identify yourself and where you live, and we welcome your comments. Good evening. I'm, I'm Sprague Simons. I live at 71 Stony Brook, which is uh, adjacent to one of the paper streets. I simply, um, I'm, I'm new to the area, and I love living in Cape Elizabeth. Um, like all property owners, I am simply trying to um, maximize the value of my biggest investment in my life. Um, I like my neighbors. I believe those neighbors that I've talked to, um, I enjoy the benefits of that area not being developed. Um, if it's um, selfish, so be it. I mean, I like the view from my kitchen and seeing, seeing the woods. Um, our, you know, kids in the neighborhood play there. People walk their dogs there. Um, it's a nice place to be. Uh, but when I, being unfamiliar with the zoning rules and regulations of Cape Elizabeth, I was um, advised by my realtor at the time that I bought the house that it might be a good idea to ask the, the council to vacate the paper street, um, thereby bringing the, the uh, parking space, my, my driveway, that's really Cape Elizabeth property, into full ownership with the house so that it might be more appealing um, to potential future buyers. I don't have any intent on selling the house right now. I just moved in a little while ago and I love it. And um, I, like, I like the neighborhood the way it is. I was just hoping to gain ownership of the driveway that I already use. Um, I was, in my original request, I, I did um, include I was hopeful about the possibility of building a, a small garage in that area just to cover my car. Um, I don't have any grand plans to build a big, huge addition to the house, um, any of that sort of thing, simply something to cover my car in the winter so that I can uh, get out of my driveway easier in the, in the morning. So um, I'd respectfully ask uh, that you folks make a recommendation to vacate the Paper Street uh, adjoining my property um, for those reasons. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Susan Payne, and I live across the street from Sprague, and uh, I agree with him. I love that area as an open wooded area. And I am going to present to you a petition that was signed by 70 people in the neighborhood to urge you to make, not to make any recommendations that might open that land up to development. And uh, this, as I said, was signed by 70 people. I'll read you the petition. The Cape Elizabeth Planning Board is meeting on Tuesday, October 18th to consider the possible vacation of streets adjacent to town-owned land. One piece of land is on Stony Brook Road, gives the address. If either of the paper streets abutting the land on Stony Brook Road is vacated, 
the land will become a buildable lot and may cease to be open wooded space as it is now. If you want the town to allow this land to maintain in its current undeveloped state and to urge the town not to vacate the paper streets, please sign this petition. Then it has a statement, I do not want the town to vacate the paper streets indicated in this, position, in this petition. And the concern that we are expressing is the possibility that this might become a buildable lot. And we understand that vacating the paper streets doesn't necessarily mean that it will be deemed buildable in terms of the wetlands issues. And I would just like to tell you the reasons that I'm concerned about this land becoming developed for three reasons. First of all, I really want this land to remain open space, undeveloped. It's a small wooded area. Children have skated there. Wildlife live there. It's part of the character of the neighborhood. Secondly, if the paper streets are vacated and the land is deemed buildable, then there's no assurance that that would stay open land the way it is now. And third, open space is increasingly hard to obtain and to pull together with the higher land prices now. And this is a happy accident. It hasn't ever been developed. And I really urge you to not to make any recommendation that we open this land up to being developed. And I would also like to tell you that the people who signed this petition live on three streets in the neighborhood. So it's not just people in Stony Brook that are concerned about this. It's a lot of people who walk in that neighborhood and enjoy that as being open wooded space. Thank you. Do you want to provide us with a copy of the petition? I have the Did you already get one? No. We should be able to. Do you want? OK, thank you. We can make a copy. OK. Mr. Chairman, I just have a quick question. So this petition just relates to the Stony Brook property. That's right, it does. Good. It doesn't express any opinion on the ocean view. That's right. OK. Some people urge us to include that, but it was too late at that point. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Brownell. I live at 9 Cedar Ledge Road. I've lived uh, on that street for 30 plus years. My kids spent many, many years in those woods. Uh, and uh, Like our neighbors, we, we want that uh, space protected. For the reasons that uh, Susan just mentioned, uh, I and my wife, who are the other abutters, Mr. Uh, Sprague is one abutter, we're the other abutters. And we hope that the property is not vacated. And uh, hope you advise the town council accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. After everyone else. Well, 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 if you would just wait until we hear from anybody who wants to speak. Fair enough. Would anybody else like to speak who hasn't already spoken? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Dan Chase, I live at 26 Stony Brook. It's, it's hard to know what we're responding to here. Uh, the council has put the proposal out to vacate the paper streets, but we're not really sure where it's going to go after that. And I have a feeling if we don't say something tonight, we may never get a chance to say anything again before it before the lot might be developed or whatever. So it's, it's hard to know what to say, but to, to even think about that lot being developed um, makes me angry. To me, it's, it's, a, it's a mockery of the, of the whole resource protection ordinance, the ordinances. Uh, for the town to even consider selling that lot um, is, is making the implication that it's a buildable lot. Nobody would want to buy it if they couldn't develop it in some way. For, for anything to be built on that lot would require literally thousands of cubic yards of fill to be placed on that lot to bring it up to street level. And, and that, would, that would require covering probably thousands of square feet 
of wetland that's in there. And this is not just, just a wetland. This is a bottom land. This is a drainage course that drains a good portion of that neighborhood. Uh, it, it contains a vernal pool which verges on being a year-round pond. It didn't dry up this year that I know of. It was a wet, it was a pond 100% of the time. To me, this is kind of a continuation of a practice that I've noticed in the town for years. I was on the Conservation Commission for six years. And in all that time, I never saw the town deny a resource protection permit for somebody that wanted to go in and impinge on a wetland. Even when we, on the Conservation Commission, recommended against it, it was pretty much seen just to be routine that people would get permission to go in and, and impinge on the wetland. And then even, and afterwards, when I would drive around and look at these properties, I would see that not only had they done what the town allowed them to do, but then they had gone back and cleared a lot of the wetland vegetation and placed loam and built lawns and placed regular landscaping around the property so that, you know, they had gone even beyond what they were given permission to do. And then, so here they are spraying, spraying down their lawns with herbicides and pesticides to protect their Kentucky bluegrass and, you know, meanwhile it's all the poisons and everything are running back into whatever's left of the wetland. Um, I wondered if you had seen this. There was an article I, I just picked up online. I didn't know if any of you might have seen it. The University of New Hampshire has been studying the runoff that flows off parking lots, roads, and lawns, the chief source of water pollution in the country. Until now, there's been little scientific data to compare how various treatment techniques work when conditions are controlled so that they're the same from one to the next. Retention ponds and gullies lined with gravel are the most common approaches to treating stormwater runoff. But as this researcher and other researchers have found, they're among the least effective at, pre at preventing pollution. Among the discoveries has been that layering soils and plants to mimic a natural wetland is highly, su highly successful, containing sediment, absorbing excess nutrients, and breaking down petroleum products so they don't pollute nearby waterways or groundwater. So when these wetlands are developed, you're not only taking away the wetland, you're, you're putting on lawns and driveways and other impermeable surfaces that are just adding even more pollution. So, like I said, it's, it's hard to know exactly what the council was proposing here. I have, I have nothing against Sprague, and I can sympathize with his wanting to have a garage there. My feeling is that if, if he can present a site plan that shows how we can build a small garage and not disturb more uh, natural ground cover than, than is already in his driveway and his lawn, then personally I'd say that that would be okay. But I definitely uh, am not in favor of anything that would, would disrupt the wetlands that are there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Riley. I live at what used to be 75 Hillcrest Road. My children remind me that's what it still should be, but it's actually 5 Cedar Ledge Road. Um, I'm really confused and concerned about what the town is up to here. Uh, this is definitely wetland. Uh, you mentioned that the town has no plan. If there is no plan, why should we disturb the status quo? That really bothers me. Uh, I heard Mr. Sprague say that he wants a place so he can park his car. I didn't hear Mr. Sprague say he wanted a garage. I heard him say he wanted a place to park his car. 
there are people on uh, that abut Arbutus Road that currently park their cars and or their boats in this paper street and nobody, none of the abutters complains. I don't believe, to my knowledge, there's been any complaint about Mr. Sprague parking his car where he is now. So I don't see any reason uh, to change anything. I don't see any reason to uh, change the status quo. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, about uh, this making a uh, mockery of resource protection. I had an opportunity to talk to a hydrologist this afternoon uh, who is familiar with the area. And uh, this is a wetland. It is a wetland over 50 weeks out of the year. I think a wetland is defined as anything that's wet two weeks out of the year. So this far exceeds the definition of a wetland. Uh, <clears throat> I don't believe, <coughs> excuse me, I don't believe that it ever dried up this year. If this would be developed at some point in time, it would require indeed thousands of cubic yards of fill. And the effect on that, this is an established uh, creek bed that flows through there. Putting in the fill would move it over, would put the wetland, it would move the wetland possibly into Bill's and John's in my backyards. It also could very conceivably raise the water table to the point where our basements flood. The alternative, the hydrologist said, is to culvert it. The only problem with culverting it is that you speed up the water flow because you confine the area and you end up with soil erosion downstream. Either way, you're in a no-win situation. I can't for the life of me understand why the town is even considering this other than for financial reasons which make no sense if you're going to uh, continue to preserve resources. I recommend that this is nonsense. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Hi, I'm Jen Caswell, and I live at 80 Stony Brook, which is Kitty Corner to this property. And I don't have anything prepared because I really didn't know what the incentive was for this even coming in front of you. So now that I, I know and I've heard all of my neighbors speak, and um, we've heard the logic, and we've heard the stats, and all that. I'm going to talk as a mother from the heart, and I know money talks and heart doesn't have a loud voice nowadays, but I am the mother of an eight and a ten year old now who have grown up kitty corner to this property, and they have been able to cross the street and feel like they're in adventure land. They can feel like they're away from their mother and their neighbors, and no one sees them, and they are wild, and they are capturing wild animals and learning amazing things out there and they're only 20 feet from me. I think that most of the people here who live in the neighborhood have had the same experience. I'm just closer to it so I feel it right now more. Um, and so I speak as the mother of two who are outgrowing this exploration period but there's a lot of neighbors who are just moving into that. And like everybody who has said, this, we are stewards of the earth. And this is an amazing stream that runs from an, a pond at the end of Stony Brook, and it runs behind all the houses on Stony Brook, ends up in this little vernal pool, and then heads down towards Shore Road into the ocean. And it is wet most of the time. And we skate there, and I broke my wrist there this winter. And, um, <laughs> I just hope, you know, we hear the peepers and we see deer in there in the, in the mornings and we hear the creek running most of the year, you know, it's not buildable. And if that's the reason that this is happening, I understand, you know, maybe the town wants to make money on taxes and that's why we want to sell the property. If they ever build on this, it'll, it'll ruin a huge piece of property. It's not about land. It's not about neighbors. I understand wanting a garage. And, I, and if we could just give him the garage and leave the rest, I'd be all for it. But 
that's not going to happen, and that scares me. So I didn't sign the petition because I knew I would be here tonight. I have pictures of how wet it is, if you'd like to see them. And um, I plead with you not to, to make a recommendation not to vacate the lots. We're happy to take the photographs. Do you need these back? Okay. Is there anybody else? Good evening. My name is Mike Moles, and I live at 423 Ocean House Road, and I'm on the town council. But I didn't come here to speak for the town council, uh, so I'm going to just speak for Mike Moles. But I was there present at our discussion of why we asked for this to be discussed. So you're supposed to be giving me some guidance, so I'm not going to uh, really impinge on that. But there have been a lot of people that have asked questions on what the council was thinking of. What are they, what are they, what are they intending? Uh, let me assure you the council has absolutely no intention of developing that lot. Uh, again, I don't speak for the council officially, but I would never vote to sell that lot. I've been out there, I've looked at the lot, I've walked the lot. It's one of the wettest lots around. It's, it's not buildable. By, by no stretch of the imagination would you ever build on it. But in deference to Mr. Simons, who I think has legitimate request uh, request for land that's not otherwise being used uh, to assist him with his setback for his potential garage or his driveway. Uh, we thought it was fair to ask this of the, of the planning board and I still think it's a, a fair request and maybe the recommendation after you discuss it might come back to um, vacate one of the two streets but not the other the street next to Mr. Simon's property. Again, that was our only intention, was to assist Mr. Simon's. Absolutely no intention, it's, it's, it's soaking wet. There's no way you could build on that lot. So I, a pledge from me that I would never vote to uh, develop that lot. Um, no one's really spoken much about the other lot. Uh, the other lot, again, as uh, Maureen O'Mara pointed out, with the vacation of the street would potentially make it a buildable lot down the road. Uh, the town is not. We, we've gone through several sales of lots in the last couple of years. Uh, it was a rather unpleasant process and I don't foresee us selling anything again in the near future. I can't you know, guarantee that wouldn't happen, but that particular lot is level, it is dry, uh, and if we deem that it needs to be part of a trail system, we wouldn't sell that lot either. Uh, however, that vacation of a street would potentially give the town the ability to do something if it really had to down the road, uh, which is what, what that is for. So thank you very much for your, for your time. Thank you very much for coming down and putting that petition together because town government and democracy only works when everyone participates. So thank you again. Thank you. David, could I ask him a question? Well, why don't we finish the public hearing okay. phase. Mr. Simons, did you want to ask? Is there? Yeah, okay. You... It's just brief. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just, I want my neighbors to know more than anything else that I, I don't want that land to be built on either. I don't, I mean, a huge part of the appeal for me buying the land, as I said before, is this beautiful view and the use of this land next to me. And I want, I want everybody, all my neighbors, that, that really is my goal. I'd like to preserve that land as well. When I asked, not knowing any of the rules, just moving in here um, a year plus ago to vacate I, um, the property, the, the paper street next to my property, I had no idea that there was another paper street on the other side that could be vacated, nope. potentially making this 10,000 square foot lot available. And it's not another paper street, it's a town owned lot. Right, but then there's the other paper street. I'm under the understanding that there's at the other end of the town owned land that if both of them were vacated, I, I want my neighbors to know I didn't petition for the other end to be, I didn't have the privilege or the right to petition to have the other paper street vacated. Sure. I was simply acting out of uh, my interest, assuming when I bought the house, when I talked to Mr. Smith originally, it, was, it showed on the maps next to my house that that was a wetland. And so the assumption, rightly or wrongly, of mine when I bought the house was that that house was never, that property next to mine was never going to be developed. That being said, I thought it would be an opportunity for the town of Cape Elizabeth to realize some income in terms of tax revenues that they wouldn't otherwise be able to, to, to garner if I simply 
got the, the vacated paper street under my name, it, it, it increased the, the lot size that I would be paying taxes on. And if I decide to build a small garage, then the appraised value of the house would go up there by increasing the revenue. So I thought that this was a win-win situation um, for, uh, for, for me and, and the, the town of Cape Elizabeth as, as well as, you know, with the understanding that I hope that that land never gets developed and I'd rather not you know, not have the right to build a garage if it meant that that land would be developed. But the one thing that I, I appreciate Mike bringing up is is that um, I would like the, you folks to consider, if you could, maybe vacating one street and not the other, and thereby not um, making this lot a 10,000 square foot lot. Um, and so I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to consider that. But I did think it was a win-win situation with the understanding that that lot would n never be able to be buildable because it was wetlands. When I bought the house, that's what I understood. So um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm in agreement with my neighbors that I hope that that property never gets built on it. I hope they all hear that very clearly. Um, and that's, that's a greater priority in my mind than, than anything else. So uh, I was just hoping to get the, the driveway that I already use into my property uh, and thought it would be an opportunity for the town to get some more revenue too, which I'd gladly pay. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have another comment. Mr. Chair, Tom Planner. <clears throat> Michael says makes perfect sense, except that Michael can't tell the future. If one paper street is vacated, we believe, the 70 people who signed that petition, that it would only be a short time before the other paper street is vacated at the request of developers. Housing prices in Stony Brook Road are outrageous, as indicated by recent sales of homes. That piece of property is worth a lot of money. If somebody, or a developer or a builder, wishes to come in with those paper streets vacated, leading to a 10,000 square foot lot, we believe, the 70 people who signed that petition, that nothing will stop a builder. I know it's wetland. Builders build on wetlands all the time. We know that. They make exchanges. They have ways of doing things. They will show up with a cadre of hydrologists and land use consultants and attorneys and make it happen. If that land is built on, it'll be a disaster for the neighbor in terms of backed up water, I mean water flow, as well as Jen so passionately discussed, would be a loss to the neighborhood <clears throat> for the wonderful asset that it brings to us. We firmly believe that if one paper street is vacated, it'll only be a short time before the other is vacated at the request of someone else, probably a builder. Seventy people signed that petition. Every one of them was passionate about conserving the paper streets in and around Stony Brook Road. Why that little piece of street? If that happens, there'll be a bloodbath on Cedar, Cedar Lodge. <laughs> Very passionate about the road, paper roads that run through there. Um, there were a lot of issues that came up when I went from home to home. I covered Cedar Ledge, Lindenwood, um, Rocky Knoll. Those are my three streets. I went to every home, knocked at every door, when people were home and they answered the door, not one person, after reading that petition, refused to sign. Every one of them understood that that lot may or may not be built on. Every one of them understood all the issues surrounding the fact that it's wetland, possibly. We don't know for sure by definition if it is wetland yet. It's wet, but if it's protected wetland, we don't know. They also understood that if the paper streets are vacated, the land will probably, the uncertainty in the future would mean that that land is probably lost to a developer. With all due respect to Michael and to Sprague, I understand you want your garage, I understand what you said about the town council, but you're not going to be there forever. Maybe in four years, maybe in eight years, maybe next year, someone will make a petition and that we could very possibly lose a jewel, an asset on, um, on Stony Brook Road. Now, this has been this way since 1920 or 25. Carl Lemke, my neighbor across the street, has lived on Stony Brook Road since 1947. When we told him about this, he was dumbfounded. 
Why would anybody want to take down those roads? Those paper streets have been there since I've been here. Why would anybody, what's different now? What has changed now? After how many people have lived in these houses in this neighborhood and abided by the rules of the paper streets, what has changed now, he said. And I said, I don't know. My guess is that somebody, a developer or an abutter, is very interested in having the property for themselves. But the risk to the rest of the neighborhood is clear. At some point in the future, somebody is going to see the value of that land, just that they've paid very high prices for homes that have turned over in Stony Brook Road, and they're going to build, and they'll find a way to do it. They'll accommodate the setbacks. They'll accommodate the drainage. They'll accommodate whatever has to be accommodated. I urge this committee, I urge this committee from all the passionate pleas of the 70 people that signed that petition, and I say it again, not one person who I spoke to refused to sign. Everyone did. I urge this committee not to vacate, to make the recommendation to the town council not to vacate those paper streets for fear of losing a beautiful asset sometime in the future. Thank you. Sir, just briefly, we didn't catch your name. And My I name is I've Bob Chosey. Thank you. C-H-I-O-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z -I. I live just at 60. I want to make 60, sure the record is clear, that's all. 69 Stony Brook Road. Thank you. I'm sorry? I have a question. I just like Okay. <clears throat> I have a question about the size of the space that's there on Stony Brook and what would happen if one of the streets were vacated, the one next to Sprague Simon. Because as I understand from Maureen O'Meara right now, that si the size of that land is 19. 9,966 square feet, is that right? That's the time. 9,966. And so does it need to be 10,000 square feet to be a buildable size? So that's 34 square feet, then it would need 35 square feet to be buildable. So if the paper street is vacated next to Sprague, would that one vacation of that make that buildable? It would be, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other persons wishing to make a comment? Okay, hearing none, I will now close the public hearing. <coughs> Thank you all for coming tonight uh, and making your views known. Now open it up for discussion amongst the board. I had a question I'd like to ask Mike Moles as representing the council. Um, what was the genesis of the request from the council to vacate the Paper Street on um, Ocean View Ocean. Road? The uh, Ocean View Road Street was looked at because oh, about, about a year, year and a half ago, the council asked the Conservation Commission to look at all the town-owned land to see if there was town-owned land that was not needed to be on the town rolls. Um, and that was one of the sites that was said, well, there is a paper street next to it. It could be a buildable lot down the road. Perhaps it, it could bring some revenue to the town if the town was desperate for, for revenue. That was the intent of, of that <coughs> lot. Um, again, I'm not speaking officially for the rest of the town council, but I was at that meeting and that was my recollection of the meeting. Whereas the uh, Stony Brook Road, we all realize is is wet as a sponge and again our intention is never to sell or develop that lot but it was simply an accommodation for Mr. Simons um, and I really appreciate uh, Mr. Chosey's comments and, and the rest of your your comments I've never been one that's been big on permanent easements but I would say of all the lots we have in town that that would be a good candidate for a permanent easement and perhaps something down the road can be worked out to put a permanent easement on that lot and still meet your, your neighbor's request for the, the road vacation. You're talking, you're talking about a permanent easement to restrict development on that? Correct. Okay. Not to give him access? No, okay. to restrict development on the remainder of the, yeah, the lot. Right. But again, I'm, I'm can't, I, just, I just happened to come into the meeting tonight, didn't come to speak on I, behalf I understand. of the town not, you're council. Not but I could certainly town propose council. that. Okay. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Barbara. Oh, it's curious 
to me that the only lot we're talking about is the one on Stony Brook. And I have a creative recommendation to give perhaps for this. I don't know the value of the land, but it keeps coming back and it's filled with water, it's got a stream and it doesn't, you're saying it's not buildable. If it's not buildable, the land can't be that valuable. So a creative solution to me might be, all the neighbors seem very passionate about this lot, <clears throat> maintaining it. I haven't seen it, but it sounds lovely and it gives you a little bit of green and some area, somebody said, for the children to play, to recommend that all the neighbors, and it seems like it's almost all of you, negotiate with the town, realizing the lot is probably not buildable, therefore does not have the value of other lots that are buildable, and negotiate some kind of a fair remuneration to the town. It might, I have no idea what it might be, and buy the lot. And then, Mike Bowles isn't going to be a town councilor forever. We all know that. That way the land is protected in perpetuity. And that might be a solution for that lot that would make sense for everybody because it doesn't seem to me that it would cost that much if it's not buildable. I don't know, though. You'd have to look into it. Okay. The other lot nobody's talking about. <laughs> well, maybe we can talk about Stony Brook first and then uh, move our discussion over to the other lot after we hash this one out. Uh, good, yeah. Does anybody else want to comment? I mean, I have a lot to say about this one, but does anybody else? Uh, on, on Stony Brook. On Stony Brook. I, frankly, since we're returning a recommendation, it doesn't have to be a yay or nay. It could be that we d request that the town council somehow find a solution that would involve selling enough to this gentleman so that he can uh, sort of make more legal what he has in terms of a driveway, um, which strikes me as good planning. Uh, and at the same time, it, as, as the conveyance, a permanent easement be put on the lot, and that, that would sort of end and the fears that the neighbors would have that this would ever get developed, yet would also re realize some revenue for the town and accommodate this gentleman's, you know, quite legitimate issue. Um, so I, I'm thinking that that kind of motion and recommendation to the town council would be appropriate. But I'm also open to other ideas that sort of get to the same goal. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. Paul? Um, Having lived on Stony Brook and very much understanding this lot and understanding the, the, the passion that surrounds it, my immediate response is that I think it's our duty as, as planning board when these matters are presented to us to take a look and provide some insight as, in terms of what we think, you know, if we, take, if we take a step in this direction, what ultimately does this mean? Um, I fully believe uh, Mike and, and the council in saying that their intent was just really to uh, accommodate uh, a request, um, but again, if, if, if this were to be moved forward, um, the potential for that lot to become buildable uh, can be real. And again, understanding the lot and understanding the nature of the lot and understanding how the business works, um, I think the most proactive thing that we can do as a, as a planning board is to, is to say no and not recommend that this be, uh, uh, that, that the paper streets be, be vacated as, as, as a way of just saying, um, we're not gonna le even allow one step towards uh, the opportunity to do that because of the fact that that lot from, you know, for, for all intents and purposes is not buildable, but knowing how creative and how money can be a deciding factor that, you know, it doesn't mean five years from now it might not be creatively adapted such that it does become, uh, you know, so, something could be done there. So again, I think just due to the nature of the lot and the conditions on the lot, uh, that it would be, be my recommendation to this group that we not vacate either Paper Street on either side. Okay. Barbara. I rather like Peter's recommendation. I like it better than mine, that the, the lot, that perhaps something be negotiated in terms of giving enough and then put a permanent easement on it, and that will protect the land forever, too. And that's effectively saying no, that you, you can't give the paper streets, and, and perhaps recommending that whatever goes, well, that's a paper street, never mind. I like Peter's recommendation. David? I have a couple of comments. I kind of wrote a note to myself that in view of everything that was said here tonight, uh, that I might 
suggest we table this for more discussion, but I also have been on the planning board because for one of the reasons it's not political, but unfortunately these, uh, these issues are very political. And, uh, and when they come up, they're awful hard to deal with. And uh, the other reason I think I'd like to see it tabled is that I, I haven't walked the site. I should have, but I haven't, and I, I'm not familiar with it. Um, I can take everybody else's word for it, but it would certainly help me to see it, maybe some others. <clears throat> and also that the council has asked us to deal with more than one paper street, and uh, I think we need to discuss how we're going to answer that question. Sure. We can turn to the other paper street after we... Uh I suggest we turn to the other one after we finish our discussion of okay. Stony Brook. So that's my position. <clears throat> my sense of things is uh, I think we've heard a, a great deal of evidence and testimony tonight about what this, what is the nature of this uh, lot. I have been to the area many times, having some friends in, in the vicinity there, and am quite convinced this is a non-billable lot. That being said, my concern and I echo some of my fellow planning board members is, and some of you all, what you all have said, which is if we vacate the paper streets, it is potentially a step in the direction towards developing that lot. And that just doesn't make any sense to me based on what I've heard tonight. It doesn't make any good sense from a planning perspective to vacate uh, paper, streets with, paper streets which may allow development of a lot which we all know can't be developed. So why even bother to go in that direction? Uh, the only way I would be in favor of vacating one of the paper streets is if the town would consider a permanent easement to, uh, and I don't know if there is an association, uh, but we can try to figure that out through a workshop or some more planning. Yeah. But I, I, I don't think it makes any sense to consider vacating that paper street unless there is uh, some protection of that lot for, in perpetuity. Yeah, the, the public's hearing over, so is a public hearing is over, so please, uh, I'll be brief. Uh, to answer your question, though, I, I would think this would be a perfect opportunity for a group that professionally manages land like this, like the Cape Land Trust, to take the lot as opposed to the neighborhood. And whereas the town's getting no tax revenue from it now, I, I don't think they would ask much money, if any money, to take care of that issue. So I, I think that, I, I will propose that at the next uh, appropriate time for the town council if, if that is your recommendation. I'm not giving you a recommendation. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, no, we appreciate your coming out tonight, Mike. How are you speaking? Uh, I thought this was closed. I just said that, it's closed. Okay. Can I speak then? Uh, well, it, I understand that. We, we, we actually, given that so Mike is on the, no, that we're certainly not taking that position, ma'am. We are here to make a recommendation. We, I think we willingly engaged in some conversation with somebody from the town council because that's where this emanated from and he's given us a little bit of direction or guidance as to what he might be willing to do. Um, and I'm just afraid if we continue to have a public hearing, this could go on for quite some time. Um, does anybody else have any thoughts or comments? Jeff. Uh, I'm I can sum it up. My feeling is if it, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Um, and the neighborhood doesn't want any changes. Uh, I can recall a couple of years ago when there was a paper street, a um, set of paper streets in my neighborhood to be vacated. And the request, the genesis of that was that one of the uh, abutters requested it. And at the town council discussion, um, Mike, I'm not sure if you were in the town council at that time or not. Um, some, one of the newer members, may have been you, asked one of the older members of the council, why would the council consider vacating paper streets? And the senior member said, to be a good neighbor to the abutters. Well, these abutters want the town to be a good neighbor by not vacating the street. And that's what I recommend. So it, it Jack, seems what, what to me we have sort of two general proposals that have received some support from the board. One is just to recommend no vacation of these two paper streets, period. The other recommendation is that uh, one of the paper streets we would recommend being vacated provided that the town took steps to right. 
uh, create a permanent easement on this town-owned lot for the benefit of either a land trust or the neighborhood or some organization that would oversee it. Uh, what, what I'm hearing, and I just want to clarify what I'm hearing, Jack, from the abutters is not so much um, they don't want to accommodate their neighbor in this right. one. They, they're afraid of what will happen next. And if you can accommodate both interests by the method I've suggested and I think Dave has echoed, which is we can accommodate this gentleman's very small interest and at the same, at the same time put the thing to rest forever with some sort of permanent condition. I agree, but that's not the matter before us. I, oh, no, it I is. I agree it's a good idea. No, it is before us because, and that's why we don't have to return a positive or a negative. We can return something in between and as detailed or as not detailed as we want. And if our recommendation is try to accommodate this gentleman, try to get him what he needs to make his lot uh, a better plan lot that if it had been developed today, it wouldn't look like it is right now with a, uh, an easement or, or, or use over somebody else's property or over a paper street. Uh, and get to the and at the same time accommodate a permanent restriction on the property so it can't be built on, which we all believe to be the case, but we want to make sure it doesn't happen 10 years from now when somebody dumps a truckloads of, of fill in there. So I'm I'm trying to get where both parties are. I understand. In fact, the town would not have to sell the land to the land trust. The town could simply grant the conservation easement to the land trust. And that's that's and another option. Uh, but I guess. My bias is generally against these in general, so I think I come from the same the same approach you do. I just I, I'm looking at a very narrow situation with this gentleman's lot. That it seems to me, uh, the town has within its authority and, and within the law to to accommodate both interests here, and I I would suggest the town should do it. That would that would be my motion. Would, I'm not opposed to that. In fact, right. I think the conservation easement is the simplest way to go. Oh yeah, lots of options there. Okay. <laughs> At this point, does anybody wish to make a motion? Peter? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to. And I, 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 it, we're just still just talking about the Stony Brook. This is only on Stony Brook. And, and it just, makes just sense to deal with one. Right. I understand that. And if I'm going to make the motion, I'll make it my way, which is I'm going to take the west side property, which is the one, the west side paper street, which is the one that abuts this gentleman's property first, and then I will either make this at the chair's discretion, make the second motion at the same time, or like we can vote on each one, one at a time. I'll, I'll. But my first motion would be uh, that I move that based on the materials reviewed and the facts presented, the planning board recommends to the town council that the paper street shown on the map abutting the west side of Stony Brook Road be vacated with the condition that the sale of all or part of the remaining lot be encumbered by a permanent condition or easement restricting development to, to additions to, to the adjacent property. And what that would mean that it would only be for the purpose of this gentleman building something to accommodate his garage, but no other building would be uh, allowed on the site. That's my motion. Okay. And that's just on the west side street. Why don't you throw in the east side? Well, my second motion would be the base, that I move that based on the materials reviewed and the facts presented, the planning board recommends to the town council that the paper street shown on the map abutting the east side of Stony Brook Road not be vacated. Okay. And become part of the permanent east? No, not, it would not be vacated, meaning it would stay a paper street. <laughs> we haven't voted yet. <laughs> the town, town you, does you, not own that. Yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to convey right uh, an easement over the paper street because you mm. don't have right title or interest. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Okay. Any further discussion? Could you read back the motion? <laughs> 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 Could you read that? Did you write it down, Peter? I did. That's, I was writing as we were talking. And Good. Usually Dave and I have the opportunity to edit and re-edit, so if it doesn't come out perfectly, it, I'm, I'm doing the best I can without a typewriter or computer. I moved the first motion on the west side. I moved that based on the materials reviewed and the facts presented, the planning board recommends to the town council that the paper street shown on the map abutting the west side of Stony Brook Road be vacated with the condition that the sale of all or, 
or part of the remaining lot be encumbered by a permanent condition or easement restricting development to additions to the adjacent property. Can I suggest an amendment to that? Sure. I'd like to suggest that it be vacated only if the town owned lot be covered by a conservation easement, be protected by a conservation yeah. easement beforehand. Well, I think I'm a, the development that would be restricted to just the, you're saying in it and. No, I'm saying I, uh, if, if it's vacated, then the neighbor still will get half of that land on that west paper street. He can do what he wants with that. Mm -hmm. And the other half of that land goes to the town lot. I'm saying that it be vacated only if a conservation easement but is granted beforehand to protect that lot, the large lot the town owns right now, from any development. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. No, okay. Yes. Yeah. So amended. <laughs> okay. Second. Amended. The motion has been made, amended, and now seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Okay, the motion carries. Oh, no, that included the east side not be vacated, right? I'm sorry, that, that motion did include the yes. east side not. Okay. The recommendation would be that, that that Paper Street not be vacated. Does everybody who voted realize that they voted for that as well? Yeah. Okay. I'm glad Michael's here so he can convey what we just said. <laughs> <just, laughs> all right, and that we still have the ocean view to uh, discuss if we even want to discuss it anymore. We did have one speaker, I, I thought. Who um, yeah, we, we, for the folks that came here primarily for the Stony Brook uh, Paper Street issue, we, we have to move on to another Paper Street. We will not be offended if you decide to leave <laughs> and go home, but you're also welcome to stay. Okay. Uh, well, my motion is really quite simple. I mean, okay. I just uh, is, there a, is there any board member who wishes to discuss the uh, Ocean View Paper Street issue further before Peter makes a motion? Just put it on the table. Okay. Excuse, excuse me, sir. We just need to finish up our business here, if you wouldn't mind discussing outside. I just have a quick comment. Hang on a second. Oh, oh, sorry. A question, really. <laughs> to Maureen. From the planning office, the staff, is there any good reason to vacate the one on Ocean View? I mean, my motion is going to be to not, to recommend that it not be vacated, but I've seen nothing that suggests this is a, in, and remotely a good idea on Ocean View. Why not? The, the Conservation Commission was asked to review a long list of town owned properties. Right. Took their task very seriously, broke it down into, I think, approximately the 35 most critical, and each commission member vis visited four or five properties each, so put some time into it. Mm -hmm. And they rec first of all, they refused to recommend the sale of town property. Well, sure. What they said is they would not object to the, si to, to the disposition of some property. Mm -hmm. This was a lot that they recommended preserving. And, and the number one reason for doing that is that there is already in this paper street a trail oh. that is being used to access the rear land. And uh, what I tried to provide you with, I, I, you only got an excerpt so you could see what you were looking at. It's kind of hard without the no, big map. No, you did a nice job. But um, if you look at that map, it says the Greenbelt Plan. Uh, the purple areas are currently owned town property. The red lines are existing trails and the orange lines are the conceptual location of new trails. So the idea is that this area right now is, is, could be a, an important trail link and we're also looking at it being an, an important link for future trails. And just to say that this part of town, other than Fort Williams, really doesn't have a lot of town-owned open space. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it, it answers my question. I'm still not. Um, the, the one thing I recall from the workshop when we discussed uh, possibly recommending the vacation of this paper street was that it could be with a condition that any sale of that, the new lot that's created 
would include an easement for the Greenbelt Trail system or for the town to access the property, the in interior property. Sure. And, and to further answer your question, um, if the lot was sold, this does appear to be oh, yeah. an unrestricted to wetlands type of it lot. Looks right. it looks so like a lot in this neighborhood could easily Yes, 120,000. Pays for the light, signal light here. <laughs> well, the, and, and to go even further, to, be, to give the whole picture, um, the town, the Conservation Commission and the council both um, recommended and have implemented a policy where when they sell surplus land, a portion of that money goes mm. into town acquired property fund. Mm. So not all of it would but this could raise money to buy land that might be better suited to be owned by the town sure mm -hmm. so that that actually is important information yes. the um this abutter though has he or she chimed in or given us some feedback on this the one that's uh appears from the photo to have their driveway i mean i originally thought that was this gentleman's lot and paul and i paul corrected me on that one but um I don't think we've gotten comments on this particular paper street at all. Have we? Well, I'm just wondering whether they know, because frankly, if you got a one year right to make sure you can move, still use this, that this is a lot that may, you know, this is a house lot that may actually need to do that. But what is the size of this lot on, our, on Ocean View? Uh, the Ocean View lot is 8,662 square feet. I've estimated that if the paper street is vacated, approximately 2,750 square feet would be added, added to the town lot, added, coming up with a total size of over 11,000. So even if I'm really off on the square footage, it looks like we're going to push it over the 10,000 square foot. But if we recommended going ahead with vacating the paper street, we need to do it with, with the recommendation of an easement. Uh, permanent easement for trails. I think, and it seemed to me that we had developed some consensus on that issue at our workshop. But does anybody else wish to comment further on that? David? Well, I, I think from my standpoint, it makes sense. It uh, eliminates some town on land, which a lot of people are anxious to do. It gives Maureen a chance to. Go ahead with a green belt. <laughs> and, it's not uh, green belt at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so I'd be in favor of going ahead with recommending vacating that street. With an easement. With an easement. Yeah. Um, that a motion? Sounds like it. Excuse me? Is that, that a motion? I didn't hear from the public. <laughs> we already had the public hearing on both. Yeah, we, we opened up the public hearing for both, both sets of paper streets. Uh, and we are now just in the discussion stage. But can, can I make a comment? We may rec make a recommendation to the town council, and I'm sure they'll have a hearing also. Oh, yeah. So. Right, this will not be the, the, we are simply making an advisory recommendation, uh, uh, the town Well, I want, I want to clarify that the, I asked this question specifically before. That petition we got was just on the Stony Brook. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, if there's no further discussion. So is there, there's a motion on the table, David? <laughs> so I'll make one. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not as fast as you uh, legally. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> um, Motion right. for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the materials reviewed and the facts presented, the planning board uh, recommends to the town council that the paper street on Ocean View right, um, be <clears throat> vacated and it 
the same time securing an easement for future Greenbelt across that paper street. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion with the express condition of an easement for Greenbelt access, yes. uh, which would be granted to the town, correct? Reserved. Reserved by the town. Reserved. Uh, is, there, is there a second? Want to second it? <laughs> second. Paul? Okay, Paul has seconded it. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Ted, just technically, I, instead of calling it off of Ocean View, there's Excuse Baker me? Street extension. Yeah, that, that yeah actually, it's, it. it's, yeah. I, I'd go along with it. Okay. Just to be clear which one we're talking about. Are we being clear enough about the easement requirement in terms of the wording? Uh, that's a question I would ask for the town planner. Uh, do we need to specify that the easement would run through the existing paper street to connect to the open, the uh, large lot, or? I promise, well, you could say easement, or it's just I used to usually say pedestrian easement as opposed to greenbelt easement. And okay. now that you've pointed that out, you would want to say something that extends the full length of Baker Street extension, which we didn't say, but. Okay, so the, we can add that. So we would amend the motion to include a pedestrian easement to extend the full length of Baker Street and to connect to a potential. Okay, it's a full length. Okay. Is that a So we have an amended motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? I just have a quick comment, and that's, and these I know these maps are kind of engrossed, <laughs> meaning that the, the paper street it looks like the corner comes into this, abuts 100 percent to this gentleman per, or these people's lot. Is that accurate? So, so an easement across it, in order for the town to fully reserve it, if it if the plan f unfolded the way we're envisioning. Street gets dis uh, Paper Street gets discontinued, merges with the other lot, the town puts it on the market, it would actually have to grant something across the currently owned lot. Yes, that's a good point. That is a good point. Yep. To make it work, right? Right. So you want to amend that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. I don't like the motion, but I'm, I, I just want it clear that our idea, the idea on the table is so that the town's reserving enough, reserves enough to connect to this proposed green lot. Plan, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I think that the wording should state that, 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 we, that the easement will transfer the presently owned land as well as That's the good language, Dave. To connect, <laughs> to connect the, the space. Right. Is that clear enough? Okay, Marina's, Marina's, saying, Marina's saying that is that she's gotten enough clarity and she can uh, finesse this. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Okay? Yes. Good, good. I got it. Okay. It doesn't really have to be legal East because they'll do it in the town council. Exactly. As long as they know what we, we think we would like to recommend. Mm -hmm. Maureen. I did want to make one point. You, I realize I should have said earlier you've asked about Ocean View. I did receive phone calls oh. on Ocean View okay. from people. I just no one bothered to write a letter or an email. But there were some people who asked, so they did receive notices and somebody knew what was going on. Okay. okay. We have a motion that's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that is the end of our. I have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. uh, motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. Planning board meeting is concluded.